Well, hello there, everybody. Thanks for joining me on our Painting Night Live. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing uh, the floating cup technique, which I am very excited about. It's one of my favorites. And uh, I've got three very interesting demos to share with you. Hopefully, they turn out great. I've got big hopes. But uh, as far as paint pouring goes, you never quite know. But I am excited to give him a shot. Uh, welcome, uh, Lily. How are you doing? Susan is here. Welcome to our live stream. I'm sure other members will be joining us uh, very, very shortly. I know a couple of them are traveling. And I know Carla is uh, traveling around for a couple weeks. So she'll be catching the replays when she can. But uh, I'm sure other people will join us. So um, I'll wait just a couple minutes. But uh, Diane is here. Hey, Diane. Thanks for joining us. Um, so I'll go over uh, the color schemes I'm going to be using before we get going uh, with our demos. Uh, I'm going to be doing three different, well, one is pretty standard. The first one is pretty standard, but uh, with a, a very um, special way of layering our cup. Um, the other two demos I'll be doing are uh, a little bit different. They're uh, variations of our standard floating cup. So it should be fun and exciting. I'm excited about them. So um, looks like Lynn might be here. Hey, Lynn. Elsie is here. Hey, Elsie. So... Um, before we get going, I just want to let you all know that next week I'm going to be going live every day at three o'clock PM. So an hour earlier than our normal membership lives. Uh, I'm calling it the acrylic pouring extravaganza. You might've seen uh, a post about it, or there's YouTube posts, there's posts on my Facebook page. Um, I'm getting ready to open up the membership again. So I'm I'm uh, going to be going live a lot. I'm going to be sharing a whole bunch of information and kind of pump, you know, talking about the membership uh, and getting people um, uh, prepared for the opening of the membership. So uh, if you want to join me, uh, you'll get a, a lot of me next week. So and I'm going to be sharing a lot of uh, interesting things, kind of uh, beginner tips up through more advanced stuff. Um, there'll be something for everybody. So feel free to join me. I'd love to see you in the live streams. Um, I'm gonna post a link in the comments. There is a page I set up uh, that has all the links for the live stream so you can join me very easily. I'm gonna pull that up quick. I should have done this ahead of time, but I forgot. So uh, let me grab this quickly and... Uh, see here, here we go. So let me grab the link. And I'll throw it, and I'll throw it down here. Um, so if you just go to acrylicpornacademy.com uh, forward slash live, that will take you to the page that has all the links to join uh, the different lives. You can join on on YouTube or Facebook, just like we're doing uh, with our regular membership live streams. And again, it's going to be um, uh, three o'clock p.m. and um, um, what else was I going to say? It's going to be starting Monday, April 18th. So every single day. And then Wednesday, we're going to have our studio chat right after our, um, our the 3 o'clock live where everyone can join. So uh, if you're watching the uh, 3 o'clock live, you can uh, jump off that and then we can join the membership, the uh, studio chat live. So and then the Friday live might be just an extra long one. I'll be starting at 3. Maybe I'll do two demos on Friday. Uh, next Friday, that is. So it's going to be a crazy full week of acrylic pouring. I'm excited about it. I've got some free demo or free downloads that are brand new um, that you can download. I'll be putting them in the membership too. So um, you don't have to worry about downloading them. You'll get access to all that stuff. Uh, and I'll show you where it is. But it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. So if you can join me, that would be awesome. And of course, um, you can watch the replays. I'll, I'll send you links if you wanted to check out the replays as well. So, um, so I just wanted to mention that. And, and then uh, the week after that, the uh, membership is going to be going, uh, is going to be opening up. So I'll be accepting new members. Um, and that's going to be another full week of I'll probably be doing lives. But most of those lives will be talking about the membership um, specifically and probably doing some membership tours and all kinds of stuff like that. So you um, are already a member. So you might not want to 
uh, watch all that stuff, but you're more than welcome to. I'd love to see you. So with that said, let's get into uh, tonight's demos, our floating cup demos. Diane has got a question already, and it's uh, uh, she says, in case you need one, what does it look like if you tilt too much? What happens if you don't tilt enough paint off? Um, well, I don't think you need to worry too much about that. If you're using my canvas coverage cheat sheet, um, which I provide, uh, and if you follow that, you're probably not going to have too much paint on your canvas. And just a standard tilt will be fine. Just cover the corners, cover the sides, um, and you'll pretty much be fine. I don't think there's anything to worry about with cracking. If you have way too much paint on your canvas, and I've seen formulas or like sheets like I have that recommend like three times more paint than I recommend, which is an insanely huge amount of paint. Uh, if you use way too much paint like that and you leave a lot of it on there, there's a really good chance you're going to get cracking and crazing in your paintings. So um, if um, if that's what you're referring to, if you go, if you're following my cheat sheet, I don't think you need to worry about it at all. Um, but uh, but if you tilt too much, like um, tilting too much can make all of your uh, kind of lines a little crazy. All your cells will get kind of stretch out of shape um, and it will just look like overworked kind of. And uh, I did a painting, a, a, a demo about two weeks ago, a Friday demo, and it got crazy overworked and overstretched. And it looks terrible because I had the wrong consistencies in some of the paints. So that's what, what it kind of looks like. Um, but uh, I wouldn't worry about like uh, tilting off too much paint. I think you'll be in good shape. So great question, Diane. I hope that helps you. So, all right. Well, with that said, I got three floating cups behind me. Um, this one right here is the one we did last week, uh, kind of in the uh, floating cup walkthrough. And uh, that one is, a, it's a little crazy. It's kind of a crazy, a floating cup painting, but I kind of like it. It's kind of growing on me a little bit. It's not my favorite one ever, but I kind of enjoy it. The one right behind me is uh, a really fun one. I like that one a lot. It's very dramatic and dark. Um, it's got some great gold in it and a little bit of purple, which I really like. Um, and then the one right here, that's what we're going to be doing for our first uh, demo, yellow and blue. So, and I'm going to show you how I layer my cup for that. And hopefully we'll get something somewhat similar. So let's get going and I'm going to flip my camera and okay. So we've got that solved. Let's talk about some colors and uh, we'll get into some painting. So I'm using the same uh, color palette. It's a little bit modified um, than the other yellow painting, the bigger one I've done, but it's very, very similar. I'm going to be using three different yellows. So I've got a metallic lemon yellow, I really like this yellow because it's one of the few that are opaque. Uh, most of the yellows are translucent or semi-translucent. This is an opaque yellow, which I really like. And it's got a little sparkle to it from Artist Loft. This is a, a deep yellow from Master's Touch. Um, pretty much all the brands make a deep yellow. Uh, Liquitex Basics, uh, Amsterdam, uh, they all make like a, a deep yellow. And then I've got a gold. And uh, this just happens to be the Artist Loft gold. Um, and so those are my three yellows. And then I'm going to be adding white also. I've got a big thing of white right here. I'm going to be adding white to the yellows as well. And then we're going to be adding a little bit of metallic blue and uh, Payne's gray. And I'm going to show you, and we're, but we're going to be adding these very sparingly uh, to, the bot, to the end of the cup. And that's how we're hopefully going to minimize the blending and uh, avoid getting lots of green. And we're also going to be using a barrier layer, maybe two barrier layers, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And I'm going to show you my cup. So here is the floating cup. It's a 12-ounce cup, but I have it marked for 10 ounces. Uh, we're doing a 14 by 18, and that is uh, how much we need for a flip cup is a 10, ounce, uh, 10 ounces of paint. But I'm going to um, layer this cup with about 80% of the yellows and whites and only 20% about with the blues. So I'm just going to make a mark on here, maybe up 
to about here. And uh, so all of this is going to be the yellows, golds, whites. And then up here, just this little amount at the end of the cup is going to be the blue and the Payne's gray and uh, a little bit more white, perhaps. So that's uh, kind of the secret to, to layering your cup. And then we're going to be doing a barrier layer. And I'll show you how that works um, to kind of separate these colors to keep, the, to keep all those yellows from blending with the blues. And uh, no guarantee it's going to work, but um, um, I've had good luck doing it this way. And you don't have to use the yellows and blues. You could do pretty much any combination of colors. This is a good way if you want uh, to your paintings to be very, um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? If you want a lot, uh, like a very dominant color over one of your paintings and then a very small amount of a different color. So, and these are difficult colors to work with. Yellows are kind of notoriously difficult. Um, at least I find them to be. But uh, so this is kind of a, a tricky one, a tough one. You could do this with yellows and purples too. Would look really cool. Uh, I've done that before and I really like the results. But you could do this with, it, with anything. If you wanted a lot of purples uh, or reds and then a very small amount of different kind of color, you could kind of do the same a concept using uh, different colors. So I'm just going to show you how it works with this particular color palette. So let's get into it. I'm going to, uh, and then I've got my hole here. My tape tab is right here, all ready to go. So we are all set. So I'm going to start by layering uh, my cup first. And I'll just leave it on the top view, I think. And let me pull the, uh, the uh, covers off of this. And these are all mixed just the, the easy formula. Um, I didn't mix any with the Liquitex formula for, for these demos. Um, so we're just doing everything kind of standard, kind of regular, easy formula. Uh, we did the Liquitex last week. And uh, the other thing is, I ordered more of it, but it hasn't showed up yet. Somehow it got delayed. So, uh, and I usually order it from Blick.com because it's a, a lot cheaper than going to like Michael's or Amazon. So I got more Liquitex on the way. But uh, so let's start layering our cup. I like to start with, uh, this is going to be a really yellow painting. So I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm going to start with uh, the lemon yellow, the metallic lemon yellow. And this is just uh, also our just standard consistency, the small mound. And um, and here is the deep yellow. And I like to use different yellows because it, it makes, uh, it gives a lot of interest to the yellows, having these darker ones, lighter ones. Um, it gives just a, a whole lot more interest in the uh, painting. A little bit of white. And I like the white as well because the white will blend with the yellows, make lighter, uh, lighter values of yellow. And then the gold, of course, will help with some cells. And it's another, you know, yellow color. And then I'll just kind of go back to the beginning and kind of do this um, layering again. Maybe a little more white this time. And you could also do, uh, these are all floating layers so far, but you could do some um, high pour. I might do some high pour in a second to kind of get a little more blending, which is always nice. So I'm going to do a little high pour with the, with the uh, metallic lemon yellow. And then I'm watching my line. We're getting kind of close there. And maybe I'll do a little high pour with the white. That would be kind of uh, create a little bit of blending and interest. And I'm almost to my line. And so now what I'm going to do uh, I'm not going to add any more of the two yellows, but I am going to add like a drizzle layer of the gold over the entire top. And this is a barrier layer. So I like to kind of do a barrier layer kind of like this. And it doesn't have to cover the entire top of the cup, but it kind of just do your best to kind of drizzle it over. And that's going to help separate all the yellows from the blues. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the white of a drizzle layer of white. 
and this will help kind of separate uh, those colors. So, and that's the whole goal. We want to minimize the blending between the blues and the yellows. So now I'm just going to do floating layers with the blue. I definitely don't want to do a high pour because I don't want, um, I don't want that blending at all. So we've got a blue. I'm going to add a little bit, and this is, I'm just going to do one layer of each, the blue and the Payne's gray, and then a little white. And then a little bit of uh, the Payne's gray. And that is it. That's how we layer our cup uh, when we want kind of a, a real dominant color. And we want other colors in there, but we don't want them blending as much. So that is our cup. I'm going to uh, move it over carefully here. And next up, we just have to uh, do our base coat. And I'm just going to use the white. So I'm going to just spread this out and then um, maybe torch a little bit and then pour that maybe secondary puddle if I need it for the floating cup to sit in. And And these are my panels, by the way. But of course you can use canvases for this. And any extra, I'm just gonna kind of push towards the center. And this is the one time where I'm not worried about adding too much paint or too much paint to the base coat, because I can use it. And it'll be the kind of, uh, uh, the little puddle for our floating cup. And here we go. So just a thin, just a thin base coat and then all the excess or any leftover, I'm just pushing towards the center. And I might have to add a little bit more, but that's all right. There we go. I'm gonna just set this down for a second. I'll torch really quick. Just to get some air bubbles. That looks good. And then I'm going to just pour a little bit more right in the center here. And that's where our cup is going to float. I'll set that down. And uh, wipe my knife off. And I'll, you could even tilt this around a little bit. It's kind of a good idea just to kind of even it out a little. And I got a few more air bubbles. I'm going to just quickly torch again. There we go. And we're ready to go. I've got to grab my paint or cup flipper. So here is my the cup flipper and we are ready to flip our cup. So I'm just going to carefully put this on top, flip it over. And then this is the tricky part is I'm going to uh, just pull out my pull out my uh, cup flipper and then just push the cup right down in the in the puddle. And that went pretty good. Cool. And I see a question from Susan. Uh, let me pull that up. And uh, is white the recommended color as a barrier layer, or can most any color work? Um, it, it depends on the colors you're using. Um, I used white because I had white in the cup. Um, and as long as it's a color that uh, won't blend negatively with the colors you're trying to separate, uh, it would work fine. So uh, white is usually fine. Black would work pretty good. I use gold a lot. Um, so it really depends on the colors you're trying to separate. But um, as long as... Uh, I'm trying to think if white would not work with a color, and I can't really think of one, but I mean, if you don't want white in your painting, then you don't need to use white. Um, just a color that won't blend negatively with your the other colors in your cup, I guess, 
is the best answer for that. So hopefully it helps. But uh, I use white for this one just because we've got a lot of white in this painting in particular. So, all right, I think we're ready to go. Let's um, pull our tab and see what happens. Here we go. And I'm just kind of sliding the uh, cup around a little bit. And then we can gently pull up and release more paint. And we could float that around a little bit more. I think pretty much all of it came out of there. Let's take a look. So now I like to kind of just gently pull the cup away. Oop, that was a close call. Uh, without getting a lot of drips in here. So we've got a center, our yellow center. I don't love that center. So I think I'm going to put my cup back and do a little twirl. It just looks, there's not a lot of interest right there. Um, so I'm going to just put this back and maybe do a little bit of a, like a gentle twirl. So we added some blue. Let me try that again. But I'm going to wipe my, the lip of the cup off to kind of get the blue off of there. And I'll try that twirl again. I'm going to try to twirl it the other way. See, that looks pretty interesting. I like what's happening there. We've got some interesting things going on with that kind of twirl. So I'm going to let that go for now. Um, and even though it doesn't look spectacular, you know, it's just kind of a, a yellow blob with a little bit of like streaks. All these things will change and, and uh, be changed and stretched and uh, maybe turn, made, made more interesting as we tilt. So we got a lot of cells happening over here, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and start the tilting process. I'm going to just, you know, start as I always do and just expand the uh, paint puddle. I think I'll go this way. And I'll turn. And just kind of move it down here. We got some big cells happening over on that one side, which is kind of cool. Okay, so we've <clears throat> that looks pretty good. We expanded it. I got a little crazy here, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to tilt off this corner first. I like what's happening right here. I want to keep a lot of the white. So let's um, tilt this one off first. That looks pretty good. And then I'll tilt back. And I'll set it down and let's see, maybe I'll go over here next, the opposite corner. And let's tilt off this one. So I want to kind of take that blue line off and I want to make this a kind of a yellow corner. And I'm going to tilt back. So I'm making a, a few kind of compositional choices at this point. Um, I like that. And so we have kind of a white-ish corner and a kind of yellowish corner. So that half of the painting looks pretty good so far. I really like the cells that are kind of popping up in there. So let's see here. 
So let's continue on. I just wiped my hands off. I don't know why exactly, <laughs> but I, maybe I was going to point something out. But uh, I really like these. I want to try to save some of these uh, if I can. Um, they're kind of close to the edge, so I'm not sure. But I'm going to maybe tilt this corner off next. And I'm going to bring the paint down here kind of slowly. And if you can go, if you go slower, uh, it kind of helps to keep the shape of the cells a little more. So here we go. I'm going to lose some of them. That's just the way it goes sometimes. But there we go. We've covered the corner. I'm going to stretch back. And kind of back into the painting. We kept a few, which is cool. OK. Now, last corner. I'm going to turn this around. And let's try. Now, we could also, maybe I'll try that first. I'm just looking at that. There's a lot of blue in there. And one thing we could try is maybe make, I'll use some blue and kind of make a some flow extender on this corner. Maybe we can keep a little more blue and make this more of a blue corner. That would be kind of cool. So here we go. I'm going to. Just kind of pour the blue on into this blue without getting that white line. There we go. So yeah, we avoided getting like a white barrier line there. So I'm happy about that. So let's pour this off and see what uh, we get. And this will be uh, complete phase two of our tilting. So again, I want to kind of take it slowly and let the paint get over there. I'm going to pour a little more on here, actually. Just to kind of help it help it out a little more. So, okay, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to just bring it back. And so we did keep some of that like flow extender up there, but I think that's going to be kind of uh, kind of a nice, a nice blue um, corner, kind of a cool accent. So I'm just going to, I'm kind of removing, recentering the paint a little bit. And then I'm going to take a look and see if there's anything else I want to do. And I think there is. I'll show you what that is in a second. So okay. So we've got uh, we've got all these cool cells, but they're all the way clumped in this corner, which I don't really like because that draws all the attention right over here. So I want to kind of move them into the painting a little more to kind of incorporate them more in a, as the center of interest. Um, so I'm gonna. And this kind of bothers me. I maybe should have tilted it off um, ahead of time or when I tilted that corner. But this little yellow corner here um, kind of bugs me. So I'm going to tilt this off a little more. That should help kind of move everything down this way a little bit more. So this is just, I'm just kind of wanting to shift the, all the paint kind of down the, uh, the panel a little more. So there goes that corner. I kind of like the white still. I'm going to tilt back. And let's see. Maybe I'm going to tilt. I'm going to bring everything down to me a little bit.
and I think I've changed my mind. I'm going to tilt that white off. I just kind of want a yellow corner there. I need to kind of get a little more paint off. Okay. So now I'm going to tilt. I got a lot of paint kind of down at that end. I'm going to tilt and kind of let it roll down back towards the center of the painting a little bit more. And I really like that corner a whole lot better. Just a yellow corner up there. And there we go. I think that's uh, pretty nice. I'm going to wipe my hands off. I like that a whole lot better now. And let's see here. Okay, so I like this corner a whole lot more. Um, we've got kind of a, I mean, there's, it's, you're going to get some green. We got quite a bit of green in this one. Um, but we still got a lot of yellow, which I like, and a bit of green running through here. We've got some Payne's gray, some darks, and some blues. Uh, we got these interesting cells. They, they don't, they kind of, we got them back into the painting a little bit more. Not a ton, but, um, I think overall the composition is nicer. Um, and we've got this little blue corner here. Uh, I'm torn on that. I kind of like it. Um, I could tilt it off and probably would like it also. But I think I'm going to leave it for now. And uh, so that's kind of a, a nice painting. It got a little more green than I would have liked. But... Uh, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of green. There's always going to be some blending. Um, but I think we did a pretty good job. So we kept all of this yellow in here, like really very pure, which I really like. We got gold and white kind of sprinkled throughout. So, so that's kind of a, a fun painting. Um, I like these bright yellow paintings. I never really liked yellow before, but uh, since I've been working with it... <laughs> It's a challenge, but I've, I enjoy working with it a lot more now. So that is our first painting. Uh, next thing we could do is just scrape off the bottom of your canvas, which I'll do. So I'm just getting the, scraping that off and then I'll get the, the bottom here. All right, so I'm going to, uh, and uh, Susan is asking um, a good question, but uh, she's like, can you tell which yellow blended with the green? Um, I think probably, um, Probably all of them did, um, not just from the from the shade of the green. It's kind of a brightish green, so probably mostly the deep yellow, and but also the lemon yellow. Um, the gold tends to not blend with yellows as much, which is why I like to use gold a lot, kind of in, in place of yellow. Um, but um, yeah, that's kind of what happened. Um, and you know, we end up with the it all ends up in a big puddle of paint, so blending is inevitable. Uh, with like this type of technique, but um, yeah, the 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 goal is to kind of keep them separated um, as best you can, um, and uh, but it never. I mean, there's no unless you do a totally different technique. There's no way to like uh, completely avoid it. So we did our best.
And I still like it. I think it's a, a fun painting. So I'm pretty pleased with it. So let me, um, great question though, Susan. I'm going to um, move this one out of the way and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so let's see. I'm going to flip back quickly and go over here. And um, if you have any questions about that technique in particular, feel free to ask. I'm going to um, just look into what I have less of. Um, I'm going to scoop up some, some paint off my table. save it for another painting. This is going to be a green painting <laughs> because I've got a lot of blue in here. But uh, the second uh, demo we're going to do is a, is a 14 by 18 again, same size, uh, but we're going to be doing a variation and we're going to be doing two floating cups. So it should be very exciting and fun. And it's uh, actually a green uh, kind of color palette that I'm working with too green and purple. So I'll show you that in a second. So that's tilted off a lot more paint than I anticipated. There we go. All right, I'm just going to cover these up quickly um, and I'll leave the gold out because we're probably going to use the gold again and I'll cover up our blue and paints gray. And let's see, we're going to keep that. We're going to get rid of this. Okay, let me get my second uh, panel. There we go. Okay, let's check out our colors for uh, the second painting. So here's my, my 14 by 18 again, and I've got two cups now, and these are going to be, so I've got two floating cups I'm going to be using for this one. I'll talk about that in a second. But let me show you the colors. I've got, uh, for our base coat color, I mixed up this, it's like a very dark bronzy color and it's got a little bit of uh, purple and a little bit of green in it because um, those are the two kind of color families we're going to be working with purple and green so I'll show you the greens first so I've got kind of a deep this is kind of a viridian green it's a mixed up of a bunch of different uh, colors um, this is kind of a golden green and then I've got a very light green right here. And this one is made of a metallic white, gold, and actually a little bit of this color. So I, I used a little bit of this, poured it in here to uh, kind of tint this into this very light kind of a sage green. And uh, this is the Viridian green is kind of a blend of uh, cobalt blue violet, or I'm sorry, cobalt 
um, my favorite cobalt, metallic cobalt teal, and uh, a little bit of black, and also a little bit of, uh, what is it? The, um, this one here, the metallic leaf green. And I'll put all these colors in the uh, description of the replay. So um, you don't have to write them down or anything. They'll be in there for you if you wanna try out these color palettes. So, and this is actually made with gold, a little bit of this, and a little bit of metallic white, I believe. And then this is all metallic white gold and just a little bit of this color added to it. So those are our three shades of green, which I quite like them. They're very neutralized, they're very metallic and kind of sparkly. So I think that's gonna be kind of fun. And then the other colors, I've got three uh, purples. So, and these are a little bit on the darker side, which is intentional. I've got this, uh, this is a black and a metallic purple. I'll show you that in a second. This is also kind of a blend of a lot of things. And then I've got regular old gold here. But let me show you this one. So our dark purple, this is, uh, black and metallic purple um, to get this really, really dark, rich kind of wine color, which I love. Uh, this has got a lot of gold in it. It's got a lot of, it's got some of the metallic purple um, and there's something else in there. I think there's another kind of a red violet in there, but it's very kind of neutralized, um, uh, kind of warm uh, red violet. And then are just a regular gold. So these are a, a little bit lighter. These are a tiny bit darker. Um, but what I'm planning on doing is having spreading our, our base coat and then having two floating cups in our base coat. So, and I've got two different cups here and they're different sizes. So uh, this is a six ounce cup we're gonna layer with paint and I'm gonna layer this one with four ounces of paint because I want one of these color families to be more dominant at least uh, give it the best chance possible of being more dominant. So I don't want to do like two cups that are 50-50, one of, you know, 50% greens, 50% purples. Um, you always want to have a dominant color and then, uh, you know, an accent color. So in this case, I want the greens to be dominant. So I'm going to be using a lot of our light, uh, our light sage green and then these other two greens. And that'll amount for six ounces of paint. And then the purples will be just four ounces. Um, so that, it's not to say that it's gonna be a dominant green painting because we never quite know once we get into the tilting, but I'm giving it the best chance possible for the greens to be uh, play the, the major role in this one. So that's my hope anyway. So I'm gonna set these aside. I'll just leave these here for now. And uh, let's layer our greens first. Move these down here. And so we've got our uh, six ounces is what we need. And these are what we're gonna put in it. So I'm gonna start with our light color and I'm probably gonna use a lot of this particular color uh, throughout this painting. So kind of a, a, a little bit heavier layer. And then I'm gonna go to the dark, a little more contrast. And then go with our kind of golden green. Ooh, looks like that was kind of clumpy. I don't like the looks of that, but uh, we'll press on. So a little more of our light. And then also uh, we can have a one color that kind of plays in both families and I'm gonna use the gold for that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of gold in here. Um, having one color uh, kind of spread between both of color families, kind of will tie things together a little bit, um, hopefully. So a little bit of gold. I'll just put a, one layer of gold, a little bit of our dark, and then some more of this. Uh-oh, yeah, that's that looks clumpy. <laughs> I don't know. And then I'm going to finish off with our light color here. That's almost all of it. And so we've got one cup uh, layered. I'm going to move these aside. And 
So I'll just leave this here for now. I'm going to layer our four ounce cup. So we've got, and this one I want to be kind of a darker cup of paint. So I'm going with the, um, the dark purple and then again our gold. And then this kind of new, like neutralized middle value. So whereas I use a lot of the really light stuff in this one, I'm going to use more of the dark stuff in this one. And probably just two layers is all we're going to need. And that's it. Maybe I'll put just a touch more of the dark. Okay. So there we go. We've got our two cups. I'm going to move this aside for a moment. I've got some blue up here. How did that happen? So I'm not worried about those little drips or anything. And then this is our base coat. So this is kind of a, it's like a bronzy color. I'm going to just spread a little bit out first. And I made this, I wanted a, a base coat color that would blend well with both color families. So this is black and gold, which we have gold in both of these colors. And we also have black in both of those color families. Plus I put a little bit of purple in here and a little bit of that green color. So it kind of is a, a very neutralized version, darker version of both of those color families. And so it should work well uh, as our base coat. And I also wanted a dark base coat rather than a light base coat. So I'm just going to spread this out. And then after I spread uh, this, I'll pour those two, like two puddles for placing our floating cups. And Gold and purple generally don't go together all that often. At least I found that. Um, you can, I'm sure there's color harmonies with gold and purple in them. Um, like one of the tetradic colors or, or triadic colors, I'm sure. But uh, I did a painting for um, kind of a commission painting, which I don't like commissions at all and I never do them. But this is a kind of a special occasion. Um, and so I did, and they wanted a purple and gold. So I was like, all right, I'll try it. And I did a color scheme that was relatively similar to this, very neutralized looking greens and uh, also quite neutralized purples. And uh, it turned out very well. And uh, they love the uh, painting. So... But, and then again, I had, you know, two color families. I made the green, the dominant uh, color family in that one as well. So there we go. We've got uh, our base coat. I'm going to pour, now I want to decide where I want to place my cups because that's going to be where I have to pour my um, puddles. So I think I'm going to pour one, the larger one, the, the larger cup here, and then the smaller cup kind of right here. And then I'll kind of tilt this around just to kind of expand those puddles a little bit. And I, I need, think I need a little more here. I think that's pretty good. So, just expand those a little bit and I think we're ready to go. So let's put our green cup on first. I've got my, my handy cup flipper. And we're going to just drop that cup right down. Let that sit there. And then do the same thing with our uh, purple cup. Uh-oh. Didn't think of that one through too well. <laughs> I'm going to have to... Oh man, 
I should have put the purple one down first. I'm gonna have to turn my my can't panel around. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Whoops, there we go. Drop that down. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back around here because my tabs are over that way. So I'm gonna pull the, the uh, tab off of one first and then I'll pour, pull the tab off the second one. So let's see what happens with our green. Just gonna kind of let that float out. And then I'll pull the purple. Now they'll kind of mingle together a little bit. We'll probably have, we'll have the barrier line where these two cups will blend together. But since we're using this kind of neutralized bronze color, um, it'll kind of work well, I think, between both of them. I'm gonna gently lift this cup and I'm gonna gently lift this cup. A little, little more paint flow out and then could float them around a little bit. Let's see what we got under here. I'm going to pull this away. That's not too bad. I'm going to pull this one away. Interesting centers. I'm going to spin this one a little bit, I think. Create a little more interest. Same with this one. I don't like this kind of greenish uh, blob right there. Now, the other thing we could do, we could think about, is disrupting our barrier line here. And that might be an interesting uh, thing to do. We could actually, um, we've got this big pool of purple, which I like. Um, we've got some of the lighter stuff right here. But we could twirl our cup kind of into the green uh, puddle. Let's give that a shot just a little bit, just to kind of incorporate these colors together a little bit more. I went right through that cell, but that's okay. So, and you don't have to do that. That's just a decision I made. You could, you could leave that barrier line alone and see what happens. But I kind of like the idea of kind of blending these two together. <clears throat> so I liken that. Also, I didn't mention um, for a 16 or 14 by 18, which is what we're working with, that's 10 ounces of paint. And uh, I did mention one of these cups, the larger one, the green one had six ounces, the small one had four ounces. So we're, we did put 10 ounces on this panel, um, the proper amount. I just divide them up uh, differently. So, and I didn't want like a symmetrical amount, like a five and five. Definitely wanted more of one than the other. So let's go ahead and start tilting this. I'm liking the way it's looking so far. I'm gonna kind of move and expand our paint puddle. And it's always a little different when you have like two cups or two paint puddles. Uh, you usually can't expand it as much as you want because you have these two different puddles around. That's probably going to be about it for me because I'm going to get paint rolling off of this way if I go many more. Uh, and then that way if I go that way anymore. So it's time to decide and pick a corner. I think I'm going to go with this corner first, um, the purple one. So let's bring some paint over here. And again, I'm just, I just want to cover the corners and sides at this point. That's my whole goal is just covering, um, covering the, the panel or canvas. And I like that. I'm going to bring it over here and maybe move 
some paint this way. Okay, so we covered that one. I'm going to go back. So we lost a bunch of this, the green over the sides, but we still have a lot of it. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to bring the paint back down. and go off of this corner next. And there we go. Then back. Okay, one left. And um, let's go ahead and tilt it. So we're going to lose a lot of those cells. And I'm just going to tilt them off. And I prefer not to have kind of weird looking cells like right on the edges. So I'm happy with just tilting them right off. And then move the paint back down. And we'll take a look at it. I'll turn it this way. So it's kind of a crazy painting. Um, these two color palettes together. I'm gonna just uh, show you what I think. And currently, I know we had we put more green on there, but it kind of looks like it's 50-50 to me between the green and the purple. So we need to do something about that. And uh, I'll tell you my thoughts. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt a lot of this corner off um, and bring the green down here. I still want to keep this a mostly green painting. Um, at this stage, we really could go either way, but we have a little more green up here. I like the cells better up here and what's happening up here. It's a little muddy down here. We've got some kind of funky looking cells, um, which I don't love. So I'm going to pour a lot of this off and pull the green back down because it's it's too split in half, too 50-50. And we want we we definitely want it more like uh, you know 70-30 at the minimum, but more like 80-20 is really kind of what you're after. You want a definite, oh, this is a green painting with a little purple in it. That's what you want people to say when uh, they look at it. Or like hopefully they don't say, God, is that a terrible painting? So here we go. I'm going to just tilt off some of this purple. And this will also stretch things out, change things a little bit, um, and perhaps create a little more interest. So I'm kind of just holding it straight up. And then tilting it, kind of changing the angle. Okay, so we tilted a bunch off. I'm going to now tilt it back. And I'm going to turn it around. So it's it's looking better. I'll show you in the, just one sec. Just recentering the uh, paint a little bit. Okay. 
So let's take a look at this. We kind of switched it around. We're looking at it from the other side now. And I like it a whole lot more. Now you can definitely tell, oh, that's a green painting with a little bit of purple in it, which is uh, pretty much what I was uh, starting from, or that was the goal from the beginning. And uh, just point some things out in a sec. So I quite like everything that's happening in here. And these are, Susan just pointed out that the, the purple is very striking and the green is very soft. And yeah, that's kind of why I picked this color palette, a very contrasting color palette, like very soft, subtle greens. And then these kind of, they're dark and uh, dramatic, deep purples. And they're still pretty neutralized, but they're just dark and powerful. Um, I, I quite like what, what this turned into. So let me turn it this way and see if you can, uh, I think it might be a nice, um, work nice as a vertical format. And it also might be nice if the purple was on top. I'm just gonna flip it around. It's kind of an interesting composition. So there we go. So that is our second one. That was kind of a crazy one. And, uh, yeah, but you know, of course you don't have to use these types of color palettes, any kind of color palettes you want, um, would work just fine or hopefully work, work well, but it gives you a lot to think about and play with. Um, I definitely recommend using, you know, when you're using, if you're going to use double floating cups, make one larger than the other one have a plan to, to go with like one dominant color and then, um, you know, the accent color. And um, then of course, once you paint, everything might change. So, but, um, and then you could use brighter colors. You could use more neutralized, like um, uh, monochromatic colors, which is what we're gonna do next. But um, that's kind of a fun one. So, and then you could choose to leave that barrier line. I blended the two together, which I quite like because um, we have these purple little bands of purple running through here. It blended together uh, fairly well. A lot of times when you have two paint puddles, you really see that distinct line. Um, this one kind of worked out nice. So I'm going to just, where's my palette knife? Just scrape the bottom and then move this aside, and we'll be on to our final painting of the evening. I'll turn this quick. And I'll check for your comments as well. I might have missed some questions if you had any. Okay. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, so last one. This is going to be a little bigger one. And 
And let me move some of these paints. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to be working with for this um, final painting. This is a 16 by 20 panel. And I'm probably going to use some of this white again here. I have the white. Might be using that a little. Uh, and then we've got, this is going to be another um, double floating cut pour, but a little bit differently this time. So I've got a nine ounce cup right here. Or this is a 12 ounce cup, but it's filled with, um, my line is at nine ounces. And then this one is also at uh, four ounces. So they're both floating cups. So one is, you know, you know, about half is, or twice as big as the, the other one. And what we're going to do, I'm going to spread out a thin base coat of white on our, um, on our panel. And then we're going to put our large floating cup down. And then we're going to pull the, the tab and let that float around. Then we're going to put our second floating cup inside the first floating cup. So it's kind of like a, like a, like a double, a different type of a double floating cup. These ones are going to be uh, interacting on top of each other. So let's try it. I'll show you the colors we're going to be using. So I mix up quite a bit of this one. This is a, a very light uh, blue. This is a mostly metallic, uh, a lot of metallic white, a little bit of gold in here. So it's a very uh, kind of like an, like an oyster color or pearl color. Um, so we have like this very light blue, this kind of very light off white color. And then a little bit darker color, a very uh, neutralized uh, gray, uh, gray blue, which is one of my favorites. This is um, blue gray from Liquitex Basics. Uh, I love this color. This is basically white with a little bit of this in it. Um, and then this has none of this in it, but it's got uh, a lot of metallic white and some silver and a little bit of silver just like regular silver and then a little bit of gold. And uh, so that's going to be our large cup. So the goal for this painting is to have a very large, light, you know, kind of all, you know, blue, whitish uh, floating cup. And then we're going to have a little darker um, area of the next color family. And I'll show you that in a second. So inside this, our, our small cup is going to be this dark color. I'll show you what that is in a second. So these are three like small floating cup colors. So we have a very light value for our large one and like some darker values for our second one. Also, these are very cool. These are all very cool colors. These are very warm colors. So hopefully though, um, we'll get a lot of contrast, not only with um, light it, lightness and darkness, but also a, a temperature contrast between cool and warm. That's the plan anyway. So this color right here is uh, two Amsterdam colors. <clears throat> um, these are, it's mostly graphite and just a tiny bit of copper that creates this really dark, kind of warm gray. This is bronze from Liquitex Basics, just a regular old bronze. And then this one is gold and silver together. And, uh, oh, where do they go? Um, well, here's the gold, just regular old. Artist Loft gold and then uh, silver. And that's how I created this. It's kind of a, um, like a champagne color. It's a very pretty 
gold. I mix this a lot. Um, I just love, it's not as, you know, yellow as gold. It's not as uh, cool as silver. It's just a beautiful blend of the two. So those are our color palettes. And let's see here. <clears throat> so let's get, uh, I got to move all these out of the way first. And let's get to layering our cup, our big one first. So move this. So here we go. So this is going to be nine ounces. And um, for 16 by 20, we need 13 ounces total uh, for a flip cup. So this is nine, and then there are other, our other one is four. So that's how I kind of broke that up. So I'm going to be using all four of these colors, this one and just regular old white. I want a little bit of that in there as well. So let me pour some of our kind of this pearl color. And then some of the blue. And I want to use our, our darker gray, but not a lot of it. So I'm probably going to limit the amount of this one I put in. And then maybe back to kind of our pearl gray. And then just for fun, I think I'll use the white twice, but I'll do the high pour first. That'll blend a lot of that together in there. And then a little, maybe one more small amount of our, our darker blue. And then one more small amount of our white. And we're almost there. I'm just gonna use a little more of our like pearl white and then I think we've got it. So I'm gonna set this aside for the moment. And let's layer our second cup and then we'll do all our base coats. So here's our four ounce cup. And we've got our three dark colors or darker colors. And I think I'm going to start with the lightest one again, this um, kind of champagne. And then I'll move to our kind of dark one. Then more of our bronzy color. And I'm thinking, I wonder... I'm going to put in a little bit. I have a little left of our very light color. I'm just going to put a small amount of that in. Again, just to kind of have one color in there that kind of ties the two paintings together. So a little bit of that. And then back to our dark. And then our bronze. And I think that's it for, for that cup. So we've got our two cups layered. I'm going to put those aside, move these out of the way. Okay, I'm going to wipe this dark spot off. Now, for uh, putting our base coat on, I'm going to blend two colors together. So I'm going to use a little white, and then I mixed up more of this blue. So I'm going to mix some of the blue. So I want kind of a blended, um, oh my gosh, my... Knife is totally covered in the bronze stuff. Okay, here we go. So let's blend these together. So it's not a solid base coat. We're going to be doing kind of a blended together base coat. And we'll see what happens. I'm also going to pour the, you know, our little puddle as well for our, to put our floating cup in.
We're almost there. Okay, so we got this spread out. And we wipe that off quick. Now we're going to, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put a, a little blue and a little white. And that's going to be our, um, maybe I'll mix them together a little, blend them together. And that's where we're going to put our floating cup. So I've got my cup and I've got my cup flipper. Let's do it. So again, I'm just going to pull that out and drop it quick. Let it sit there for a second. I forgot the torch, but that's okay. And let's go ahead and pull our tab and let that kind of float around. And I'll gently release a little more paint. Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> My screen went nuts. So here I'll take a look underneath there. We've got a couple little drips that came from the top of the cup. Um, I kind of like that. So I'm going to just leave this alone, I think. Um, I'm going to move the puddle down a little. And I'm going to put my second cup right here. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to just drop our cup right in our first floating cup. And then I'll pull the tab. And then just let that kind of flow into our first cup. So I'm going to take a look underneath there. I got some drips. So we've got some interesting, I like the blending right here that we're getting. I want to try to do a little bit more of that. Incorporate this puddle more into this puddle a little bit. So I'm going to do a little more of the, our twirl. Not a ton of it, but just a, a little it, see if I can incorporate those a little bit better. I kind of like that. We could even try to like a little finger drag if we wanted. Looks like my camera's going crazy. Um, let me switch here. Um, so it looks like my camera, like my second camera's going nuts. So I'm going to um, try to reestablish that one more time. And sorry about that.
Okay, let me try this now. There we go. Hopefully that'll be better. So we can finish up our final demo. <clears throat> Apologize for all the technical issues. My puddle is kind of sliding away from me. <laughs> so here we go. So all we've done, is we put our big puddle down. Uh, we put our, uh, our first floating cup. We put our second floating cup in our first floating cup. We've incorporated a couple things, a couple like finger drags. Um, now it's time to just do our tilting and see what happens. So I'm gonna just expand our paint puddle. And similar to like the last painting we did, we want to have, you know, a dominant color and more uh, accent color. And the brown looks like it wants to take over the show. So we might have to tilt uh, quite a bit of that off, I'm thinking, if we want our light colors to kind of be more dominant, which is what I had in mind. So I'm going to tilt off this corner first. And I might take quite a bit of this paint with me. That's quite a bit right there. So I'm going to go over to the uh, opposite corner. And I just tilt a little bit of that brown off the other side there and go back. So far, so good, I think. I'm going to tilt to this corner next, the one closest to me. And with that one, we could even put a little more of the uh, blue on here, the flow extender way of doing it because all of the base coat really blends right into the uh, our first cup. There we go. I'll tilt that down again. And we've got one more corner. right down here. Okay, I'm going to tilt back. Okay, so we've covered everything. Now let's just take a look. I'm going to switch it around and take a look at it. And I, I like a lot of it. I think we still have a little too much brown in there, our darks. I, I'd like to have a little more of our light colors. And um, the other thing I see let me wipe my hands quick, is all of the interesting stuff is kind of right in the center of our composition. Kind of right in here is all the cool stuff. And it's kind of right in the middle. And I don't want that. I want it somewhere else, either over here, or over here, but not right in the kind of the center. So I think I'm going to tilt more of this off the brown. Maybe move our center of interest over here. That should spread a lot more of the, the light blues over and uh, 
I think, because that's really what we want to focus on mostly in this painting, is a lot more of the light colors than the dark colors. So let's give that a shot and see what, what happens. So I'm going to just kind of lift it up again, very similar to the last one. We need to uh, establish the dominance of one of these color families. It sounds like Game of Thrones, <laughs> but that's, it's just uh, art stuff and composition and design. I gotta get a better grip here. So I'm liking this. I need to tilt it forward towards me a little to clean up that stretch line kind of on the bottom. There we go. So now we've done, we've kind of a uh, Pull that center of interest over a little bit, but now I want to kind of bring it back up into the composition a little more, so it's not right down on the edge there. So I'm just kind of tilting it back. So just playing around with uh, moving the, the paint around. Okay, let's take a look at this now. So I like parts of it. I don't like other parts of it. Um, I like the color scheme a lot. But I don't like, I'll show you what I don't like. I like, um, I love the different colors, the way they act, interact together. I like these wispy areas right in here. We kind of incorporated those. But what I don't like so much is just this you know, we have none of the light, light colors in here, in the dark colors. It's just a big kind of roundish shape. So I don't love that too much. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's a way of tilting that I could bring a little more of this down here. I don't know if I can figure that out. We've got a little right here, but not a lot. So... I don't, and of course, I don't know how much I want to play with this. Um, but we did move our like kind of center of interest over here, which I like. So I'm going to, I'm going to tilt a little bit more and then I think I'll call it good. I'm just going to try to pour off a little more of this, bring this down here a little bit more, but then we'll call it good. So. And I think another way to do this, you could do something similar to this would be, um, well, we're working on floating cups. So I wanted to show you floating cup um, examples, but we could have done a floating cup like we did the first one. And then also do a, um, like the flip and drag through our first floating cup puddle. That would also work well and probably incorporate the colors a little bit better together. So I'm just trying to do some really extreme tilting to um, try to get some of the white to come down into the darks a little more.
and it's kind of working. I'm going to show you. I'm going to tilt back a little bit. Okay, I think we'll call that good. Let me show you what we ended up with. So we did, we, I brought more of the blue down and we, we got rid of that big roundish shape. Now we have a much more interesting line down here, which I quite like a whole lot more. So um, I'm much more happy with this painting now. Now it kind of looks like a you know, really abstract seascape or something, but, um, but we were able to kind of play around with the composition a little bit more and get a, a more varied line in here. So I'm quite pleased with that. So it's not my favorite, but I do like it a whole lot more. So I, I'm gonna explore this probably color scheme again. I really like the color scheme. And we could um, also modify the technique a little bit. Um, so, and uh, I'm gonna wipe my hands off quick. And then I'm going to check and see if you have any questions. And then I think we'll be finished for the evening. So, so that was kind of a, you know, it started out okay, but then we had to kind of troubleshoot some stuff. But that is usually the case with a lot of these types of paintings. So, but, uh, all right. So let me see here. I'm going to flip back to to me and it's all, I'm all blurry now, my gosh. So let me see if I can, there we go. That looks better, I think. So, and then Lily, uh, was it Lily? Lily had a good idea, like flip a light cup over the dark cup. That would be a good idea. You could do a, um, um, if we had more time, maybe I, I'd do that, but we could fill another cup and then do a flip and drag over that dark area. And that would incorporate a lot more of the lights into the darks. So that's a great idea. Um, great idea, Lily. So let's see here. I'm just going to check if, there, if you have any questions about anything we talked about tonight or uh, any other questions. Um, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll get, try to get to them. Diane has a question and she's asking, what were those colors again? Um, I'll, I'll put them all in the, in the, um, with the replay inside the membership, and I'll list all the colors. But um, these particular colors, like the brown colors, were um, uh, bronze from Liquitex. Uh, the light color was uh, gold and silver together, about 50-50 mix. And then the really dark one was Amsterdam, graphite, and just a little bit of copper for those dark browns. So let's see here. Uh, thanks for the great comments, everyone. I'm glad you um, got something out of it. I, I liked the paintings. Uh, let's see. Uh, Susan is asking, is there a tool you could use to drop down the lighter? A tool you could use to drop down the lighter. I'm not exactly sure what, you're, what you mean, Susan. Um, oh, I think to drag, maybe drag some of the light color into the dark color. Um, a tool, well, I'd say the easiest way to do that would be kind of what Lily suggested, um, or like do a, like a flip and drag through there. Um, that would be probably the, the best way to keep kind of the same feel for the painting. Another thing you could try, but it's gonna change the look, is to do a swipe. So you could do like a reverse swipe um, with a, like a palette knife and, and swipe some of the light color into the dark color but that's gonna really change the look and you probably have to do that other places um, to kind of balance it out. But, um, but that's kind of, that's a good question though. But one of those would work and you can always play around with this stuff. Um, you know, just try things, experiment with things. And uh, I mean, you could also, I mean, you could just use a finger drag, the white into the, into the dark and then do a little more tilting to kind of incorporate that in there again. So there's quite a few things I guess you could do 
to kind of bring some of that light into the dark. And uh, yeah, good question. I'm going to just scroll up here and see if there's anything I might have missed. Um, yeah, and I like this <laughs> great comment from Diane. Th would have thought this one is a flop, but you did it again. Well, thank you. I'm glad I could uh, I could pull it out. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. Yeah, those are kind of these color palettes. Some of them, especially the green one and the purple one, um, those are kind of risky because you never know what's going to really happen with those. Um, they're unusual colors, you know, they're definitely not straight out of the tube. So, but, uh, great comment. I'm glad I could, I'm glad I made something up out of it. So, okay, cool. I'm not seeing, um, and I don't see any. Okay, I don't think I see any other questions that I missed, hopefully. So, all right. Well, I think that's it. I'm glad um, you could join me tonight. This was a fun demo. I love the floating cup. I love experimenting with the floating cup um, and uh, trying, you know, doing it different ways, variations. I always get a big kick out of that. So these are three different variations that I've, I've tried these before, um, but they're, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. The floating cup, much like the flip cup is very unpredictable. So, um, and you never ever get the same two things, just like the yellow painting. Uh, we got quite a bit of green in that one, but, um, but I, I still quite like that one. So, um, so, all right. Well, thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing my Friday demo like usual. And then next week, get ready because you're going to see a whole lot of me if you choose to. So um, I'll get the replay up in the membership and then I'll list all the colors for all the different paintings. And uh, you can you can uh, check them out there and uh, try some of these if you want to. And of course, you can always change up the colors. You don't have to use what I used. These are just some ideas to give you some uh, um, a little bit of inspiration, hopefully. So thanks so much, everyone. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.